This is the 2022 Audi e-tron GT. And yes, before the comments section goes nuts, it is two different colors because this was a two day shoot and somebody decided that they liked the car so much that they had to take it home with them after the first day. And we'll talk about it in the review, but I can kind of see why. So thanks to my friends at Audi Milwaukee for having me out and letting me have a go in both of these Audi e-tron GTs. The Audi e-tron GT. Sure, it's electric and yeah, it's probably the future, but this is definitely the best way that you can transition from internal combustion gas cars to an EV. And what I mean by that is the design is very recognizably Audi. The interior isn't shouting, look, I'm an EV at you. And the ride, it builds power just like an internal combustion car. It's very familiar driving uh, Audi experience, all while still being blisteringly quick. We'll start under the skin because here it's more important than ever. This e-tron actually rides on the same chassis as the Porsche Taycan. The chassis was designed, developed, and engineered from Porsche. So if you're gonna borrow a chassis, you might as well borrow from the best. The chassis here is really solid, which means the suspension and the electric motors can shine on their own, and they do. Notice I said motors, not motor. That's because all e-tron GTs come with dual motor all-wheel drive, which you can think of as the next generation of Quattro. Both motors working in tandem produce a combined 496 horsepower and 446 pound-feet of torque. But that's not the end of the story. You can access a boost function, which will up your power output to 522 horsepower and 472 pound-feet of feet pound feet of boost. With boost mode, without boost mode, this thing is still quicker than you could possibly ever need. Zero to 60 is done in under four seconds. Topped out your range is rated at 238 miles, which isn't the most I've seen, but it's certainly not the least. If you really want more power, there is an RS trim of the e-tron GT, but even the RS gets the same battery pack and the same motors, so it's really just the programming that's different. That's a long-winded way of saying, you can save yourself 50 grand and get this, quote, base e-tron GT, because it's still plenty quick. Now, big power is great, and we've come to expect that from modern luxury EVs, but this is an Audi, which means it's a luxury car at its core. So it shouldn't necessarily try to snap your neck every time you go near the throttle. What I'm getting at here is the way that Audi has programmed the power to come in. You get a sense of building power that feels much more conventional in the sense of if you're coming from an internal combustion car. And all of that means it's a very familiar driving experience behind the wheel of this thing. Some of this is helped by the fact that this e-tron GT is one of the very few cars to use a two-speed transmission. This helps it feel sharper and more dynamic at lower speeds and launches while also being more efficient at higher speeds. But enough about power. This is a luxury car, so let's talk about ride. The e-tron here gets adaptive air suspension, which means you can change the entire character of the car with the push of a button. Of course, in dynamic mode, things stiffen up from your suspension, your throttle response gets sharper, but you do still feel the weight of this thing in a little bit of a corner. It's still pretty planted. It has good road holding and good grip, but you can't really escape the fact that it is an EV and batteries are heavy. Then, of course, dialed back into comfort mode, the air springs soften back, and you have one of the best rides that I've ever been in, in an electric car. It soaks up the bumps incredibly well without the feeling like you're floating or wafting like in an old Cadillac. It's really, it's a really well calibrated suspension system working in tandem with the chassis to give you the most supple ride. And then when it comes to steering, it's effortless. That can be taken two ways, but seeing as this is a luxury product, I think the lightness and lack of feedback suits the personality of the car better. You'll get torque vectoring and the option to have rear steer, so this can be sharp as a tack when you want it to be as well. Ultimately, behind the wheel, this e-tron GT is incredibly Audi in the sense that it strikes an incredible balance between luxury and performance. But let's step outside and chat about some of the details. Okay. So Driving this thing, I feel a lot like Tony Stark. And how can you put a price on that? And it's also kind of cool because the sounds that this thing makes on power, it sounds a lot like stuff you get in the Iron Man suit with your repulsor gun on your hand. But anyway, this thing, from an aesthetic perspective, first of all, if you're see you've seen the two different colors. So we had the gray one, and this is actually, it looks white, but it is, it's classified as Suzuka gray. So in the harsher midday sunlight, it has a really nice kind of like 
off-white pearl effect. It looks really cool. Uh, and then, of course, as the sun starts to come down and you get darker, it becomes more conventionally gray. Now, this thing, from an aesthetic perspective, looks a lot like a mixture of the Taycan and the A7, which is a good thing because those are fabulous looking vehicles. So, I mean, it's just good looking, isn't it? It looks pretty conventionally Audi. You have your kind of like hexagonal grill with some pretty uh, typical lighting elements. And then you've got this really, really long hood. Now, of course, you have a frunk under there, which is really cool. And then you've got uh, what looks like dual chargers. But the nice thing is, they're on the front of the car, which again, I use myself as the case study, but the charger, the outlet in my garage is on the back of the garage. So if I pull in forward, I can plug in easily without having to back into my own garage, which would be a hassle. Now around the side here, you do have functional air curtains uh, behind the wheels. You've got the black optics, uh, black mirror, as well as the black uh, panel roof, which again is glass. Uh, but then, you know, it's it's pretty conventionally Audi. You have a flared rear hip here, which looks really, really good. And then we start to get to the back. This is my favorite angle of the vehicle. The, I mean, Audi just does lighting really, really well. So the tail lights and this back three quarter just looks so good. And I wasn't quite sure of this when I saw the photos of it. I was like, oh, the Taycan kind of looks better. But now in person, especially with this Suzuka Gray, this is a pretty spectacular looking thing, but it also looks spectacular on the inside. So let's check that out. Okay, then stepping onto the cabin, I mean, this is a great interior. It's a great place to spend time. It feels special. Uh, they didn't necessarily need to reinvent the wheel here, but it is a very, again, familiar Audi experience. It's very geometric, it's very modern. You have great differences and diversity in materials and textures. You've got this really nice perforated leather steering wheel with some uh, gl admittedly gloss black accents on your um, on your pillars, but you also have this gloss black insert in the middle here, but the rest of it, it's like this faux carbon fiber. Uh, and then you've got this like textured pattern over here. The door cards are Alcantara, red leather. Again, I'm talking about the one that I'm in. The B-roll that you're seeing is, is a little bit different, so I apologize for that. But these are the typical touches that you would get in the extended leather package or the full leather interior package, which this Suzuka gray one is in. So you can option this if you'd like. And then the extended leather package will also get you ventilated front seats, which is fantastic in hot days like today. Uh, of course, you've got three level heated seats as well as a heated steering wheel. Uh, and then in the premium package, you also get heated rear seats, which is very nice. Oh, and you can also get massage front seats, which is very luxe, very nice. But then in terms of the technology, of course, you've got a head up display, you've got your fully digital cluster, and you've got your typical Audi MMI infotainment system. We've covered these uh, in other Audi reviews, so I won't go into a lot of detail here. Just know that it, there's absolutely nothing to complain about here. The black levels are fantastic. The graphics are good. The information makes sense. You're not overloaded with too much. Uh, it's, the processing speed is really, really good. Um, and it's super easy to control, obviously. So full marks for the infotainment and the technology and the way that it's integrated here while still having you know hard buttons for your HVAC or your climate controls and things that you use all of the time. More detailed stuff is the screen is 10.1 inches. Uh, you do get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, and then you also have 360 cameras, reverse park assist, all that sort of thing uh, as well. So it is a fully, fully modern tech stack that you get in here. And then finally, I guess the last thing I'll mention in the front here is just that you get Bang & Olufsen speakers, which are phenomenal. I'm not a huge audiophile, but I appreciate good sound. So they're very, very good. So overall, the interior experience from, from a cockpit and front cabin perspective, it's very unique, it's very special, while still giving you that sense of familiarity if you're used to other Audi products, or even just interacting with um, other vehicles in general. I know a lot of EVs with the Tesla thing, they start to go minimal and you have to go and interact with the screen to just move your air vent. None of that stuff here. It's very simple to just get in and drive and I really, really like that aspect. Now, when we start to talk about the back seat, first of all, let's mention this panel roof here. Again, you don't get a, um, a sun shade, which is a little bit interesting. We saw that in the Ionic 5 and the Mustang Mach-E. So you do have UV treated glass up here, so it's not gonna get super hot, but it will bring some light in. This is a mixture of of like black and gray and darker, deeper red interior. So to bring a little extra light in makes it feel a little bit bigger, especially because these rear seats aren't huge. Um, for myself at 6'1", they're livable. Now I don't wanna drive cross country, but I could do you know an hour, two hours uh, and still be relatively comfortable, especially in the winter with those heated rear seats that you get here, which would be very nice. Um, it is, so it technically has a, a middle seat and there is still a bit of a transmission tunnel, so it's not exactly, 
it's more usable as a as a four seater than a five seater but you could fit five people in here in a pinch if you needed to but no overall the the, the design the materials it's all top notch it's very exquisite uh, very much what you'd be expecting from an audi and then when we talk about the final thing the trunk this is the only place that I think it kind of misses in terms of if it's going to compete against something like a Tesla Model S. We don't have a, a hatch style trunk. We have a more conventional trunk, um, which is interesting because the A7 does get the hatch style. Uh, the Tesla Model S does. And I would just, I would like to see it. It would add a little bit more practicality, a little bit more trunk space. Uh, so that would be nice. But everything here, I'm going to say it again, is very nice, very unique, very special, very expensive and, and built very well. So I think with that, that's probably a good time to get into final thoughts. So that's the new Audi e-tron GT. And having spent some time with it, it's clear to me that this is one of the most complete EVs on sale today. It may not have the range of a Tesla, but it's better everywhere else. And that's not even mentioning the fact that new e-trons get three years of free charging through the Electrify American network. Thanks again to my friends at International Autos at Audi Milwaukee for letting me have a go. And if you like what you saw with this e-tron, I might contact them pretty quick. Thanks for watching.